Hey everybody, it's Mr. K, and I want to give you a friendly reminder about the test that's happening on the 7th of December, uh, this Friday, uh, three days from now, so hopefully that you are, uh, hopefully you're studying up on that. want to remind you, best way to study is to click number six for both of these, lesson two and lesson three. Um, like I said down here, that's what you're getting tested on, um, and if you take these two quizzes, you should be able to do fine on the test. So anyway, let's go to the PowerPoint. And this was the do now that we did in class. Um, it's just what we've done already. You don't need to know it for the test. Um, but for the year, yes, you want to remember this. These are the different landforms. Um, let's start by defining a region. Uh, a region is an area that has one or more features in common. And it could be broken down into two categories. Um, it could be physical or it could be human features that make a region. Now, remember, anything that is red in these PowerPoints, you have to know for the test. So uh, these are different types of regions. These are the examples that I'm going to give for different types of regions. There's political regions, climate regions, geographic regions, labor regions, laborist types of work, uh, language regions, and religious regions. Now I'm going to give you an example of each one. So here's climate regions. Basically, these are parts of the country that have similar climates to each other. Uh, so, you know, this big green region, this is called the continental climate region. And, you know, like it says down here, mild to hot summers, cold winters. Anyway, you know, you'll be able to read this on your, um, you know, your packet that you have from class. But each one of these regions has a very different climate. Uh, so it was grouped together and put into regions. Some are very small, some are very big. Um, this is an example of a religious region. It's called the Bible Belt, and it's in the southeast. And basically, uh, the majority of the population there is Christian. Um, and, you know, the Bible is a holy book of Christianity. And this is not to say that there are not people from other uh, religions who live there, because there definitely are. But it's considered a region because the majority of people that live there are Christian. This is an example of a language region and doesn't have a fancy name. It's just called the U.S.-Mexican border. And it's a region because the majority of people uh, actually speak Spanish, um, you know, within this, within this region. Um, this dark brown area right in here, um, and even to the tip of California right here, um, has, uh, in this case, uh, 48 to 91 percent of people speak Spanish at home. So anything above 50 percent is a majority. This lighter brown, it's a little bit less than majority. It's 22 percent to 48 percent, and it's broken down into counties. But this region right over in here is very different from the rest of the country because uh, a smaller amount of people uh, speak Spanish as the dominant language at home for the rest of the country, but this makes it a region. Or we can say that this is the English uh, dominant region uh, in terms of language to speak, and this is the Spanish dominant region. Here's an example of a political region. Um, it's called Middle America, and uh, this is um, statistics from the 2004 presidential election, and the red voted Republican. The Republican candidate was George Bush. Um, the Democratic candidate was John Kerry back then. And, um, you know, basically you can say, okay, this is a Democratic region, this is a Republican region, um, and this is another Democratic region. So the way people vote can create regions too. Um, I'm going to show you um, economic regions now. I'm not going to read this to you. This is in your packet. But um, when there's a labor region, instead of calling it a region, it's called a belt. So basically, this is the wheat belt here. Uh, the wheat belt is known as the breadbasket of our country because this is where the bread is uh, grown. Uh, bread comes from wheat. That's the main ingredient. So that's why that this line of states right here into upper Texas um, is called the wheat belt. This is the dairy belt up in here. Got a lot of cows there that produce milk. Uh, this is the corn belt right here. This is the tobacco belt. Um, this is the cotton belt, and this is the sugar belt. Now, you're about to learn about another word called specialization. And you can say that these regions specialize in a certain product. For instance, wheat, dairy, corn, tobacco, cotton, sugar. 
These are the main parts of their economy, or at least big parts of their economy. So this is an image of the United States taken at night from outer space from a satellite, and the bright areas are electric lights. This basically shows you the breakdown of the population, where we live. And um, California is actually the most populated state, but um, look at all of this like sparsely populated area in here. This is because of the Rocky Mountains over in here, uh, because of the deserts over in here. It's a lot more difficult to live. Um, you know, and basically the majority of the population still lives towards the eastern side of the United States. We have Miami down here. We're up here in New York. Look at how bright that is. New York is the biggest city in the nation. Uh, but, you know, we can say that the eastern region of the United States is more populated than the western region, with the exception of California, which is the most populated state. Washington is up there, too. Um, economy is a system people use to produce goods and services. And, you know, it's kind of a very, I don't want to scare you with it, it's a complex word. Uh, there's some countries who have a very simple economy. I'll use the example of Saudi Arabia, and you're not going to be tested on this, just using it as an example. Saudi Arabia is basically, the main export uh, is oil, and there's very little else. It's a desert country, so they don't have other resources, but they sure have a lot of oil, um, and that is the main part of their economy. America, I'm going to use a big word, has a very diversified economy a very complex economy. Um, it's got a lot of different products that they sell, but some regions specialize. Like I said, um, and I'll give you the example of the definition of specialization in a second, but just like the country of Saudi Arabia, Texas and Alaska, they specialize in oil. Um, here, look, we have uh, this belt over in here where um, coal is harvested. You got West Virginia, Kentucky, um, Southern Illinois. This is the coal belt. I guess you could say these three states kind of specialize in that, but you have different areas of specialization, and these are each regions. So I'll give you the, ex the definition. When a region makes a lot of one product, it is called specialization. Specialization happens when people make goods that are best, uh, um, they are best able to produce with the resources they have. So New York, you know, we can't make coal because we don't have coal, uh, but we have other things. We're a very commercial region. Um, yeah, New York City is where a lot of the, um, the headquarters of um, commercial companies are, um, you know, so, you know, we're like the heads of banks. We're, we're, we're kind of like the commercial side of the economy. Upstate New York is different, though. Um, this is the total population of the United States, 308,745,538. Um, and this is a map of population density. And look at this. We're in the Bronx right now. We are in the third most densely populated borough in the United States. Per square mile, on average, the Bronx has 32,955 people. Um, and that might sound like a lot, but Manhattan, on average, almost 70,000. So it's very tightly packed. Uh, people live very close together um, in this region over in here. Um, most populated state is California. Um, highest county population is um, Los Angeles County. But LA is not the biggest city. Uh, biggest city is New York with a population of 8.2 million. This is population growth. I want to point out first, we have one state that's actually shrinking in population. It's Michigan. And people have moved away from Michigan because there used to be um, the auto manufacturing industry that was there. But that has kind of stopped uh, because a lot of the jobs have gone. Well, this is not on the test, but just as an interesting point, many of the jobs went to other countries in producing cars. So Michigan is not needed. Michigan is reinventing itself right now. But we have states, um, Idaho. Nevada, Utah, Arizona, Texas, those are the fastest growing states with the population growth of more than 20 percent. Um, I threw this in there just so that you can see, um, you know, what states are growing and at what pace. We only have one state shrinking. New York is pretty much staying the same. 
Um, you have to know the difference between consumer and trade. We're all consumers. A consumer is someone who buys goods and services. Who doesn't? Um, trade, trade happens when we can't produce something that we need. So for instance, let's say, and this doesn't exist, let's say that there's a state that does not have water. And yeah, they need water in order to survive. We have to drink each day in order to survive. They would have to trade the resources that they have um, in order to get water because they need that to survive. So that's why trade is important. And trade can happen on like, you know, really important stuff like, like water, or it could happen on simpler stuff. Um, I'll give the example of iPhones. That's more of a want than a need, but everybody wants an iPhone. So, um, you know, I'll put that in there. Last thing I will recommend, and I'll put the link in the video description of this video. Um, this is a really great video of, um, you know, like how population density works and why people move to regions that they move to. Um, so anyway, I hope that this prepares you for the test. If you listen to this actively, I'm pretty sure that you are prepared. Um, I will also say again, and I'm being an egg, go to number six for two and three. If you know these, you're fine. Um, you could read down, you could get the textbook for number two. Um, you could hear the video again by clicking number one, re-download the packet, the PowerPoint. I even made flashcards for you guys. So um, you're more than prepared for this. Know these terms, the key vocabulary terms.